convening the Conservation Commission on Zoom, and uh, we'll do a roll call to see who is in attendance. So uh, let's start with, do we have Bailey? Present. Okay, and how about Dean? See, Dean is on. Present, yep, <clears throat> yeah. Dean is here, good, okay. And um, uh, Doug? Here. And uh, Emilio? Here. Betsy? Here. Al? Here. And Jack here. Okay. Um, so we have our first hearing for nation applicability. So Landis, you have the uh, notice? Okay, Town of Walpole request for determination of applicability and land disturbance permit at Conservation Commission public hearing in accordance with Mass General Law 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, Town of Walpole Wetlands Protection Bylaw and Stormwater Rose Pro Bylaw. Notice is hereby given of the intent of RDZ associates to subdivide a lot and construct a single family home, homes at 2438 Peach Street, a portion of which are proposed within 100 feet of bordering vegetated wetlands and requires a land disturbance permit. Plans are on file. The Conservation Commission carrying on the above matter will be held in town hall or via ver via virtually accessible video um, uh, started on April 14th and has been continued since. All interested persons are requested to be present. John Wiley, Chairman, Walpole Conservation Commission. Okay. Um, I understand we have a letter from the applicant requesting a continuance. Um, yes, I received an email from Dan Merrickin of Legacy Engineering stating we would like to request a continuance without discussion for 38 Peach Street to your first meeting in July. Our first hearing with the planning board was postponed to June 17th, and we'd like to appear before them before we undertake any plan revisions. Okay, so... Um... So we want to move that until July 14th, and do we have anything on at that point? Uh, no, we don't. So make that for 7 o'clock. So I'll move. Second. All in favor? Bailey? Aye. Dean? Aye. Doug? Aye. Video? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Mel? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. So that's a 7 o'clock. July 14th. Okay. Um, all right, so while we're waiting, do you want to You have you have uh, Summer Street on the uh, agenda. Is there anything to discuss at this point, or you're just uh, working on your um, order of conditions with uh, Beta? Um, yeah, that was yeah. I put it on there. It was sort of an oopsie, but um, the so the the it, it it will also be on the June 9th meeting when we um, more formally discuss. The order of conditions i let them know too that that was on the agenda um but we weren't planning on really discussing anything so beta is working on their suggested conditions and i sent them our boilerplate conditions and we will put them together and have a draft prior to the june 9th meeting okay do we have a date uh, where we may expect that so we have some time to look it over prior i expect it'll be a uh, somewhat lengthy. Um, don't think I set 
a particular date with them. However, it, uh, I think, you know, they're working on it now. So do you want it by the 7th or earlier? The earlier, the better. I think so we all have a, a chance to review it and uh, come up with any comments rather than... Okay. So I'll see if they can send it a week out, a week before the 9th, so on the 2nd. Um, yeah, just see how that fits with their schedule, but preferably yeah. uh, uh, well, a little Well, it might sooner. be a little tough because now they're thinking, thinking of it. Um, so it's Wednesday the 26th. Monday is a holiday. I will be in on the first, but I was going to take the second and the third off. Um, I'll talk to them tomorrow and see see when they'll be ready. Okay. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Out to you I think if possible. we get to, to them, so uh, the sooner the better, so we have a chance to look that over. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Um, see what else we have certificate of compliance man this is going to have a site visit well uh, there's nothing ready on that right you're going to do a site visit uh, next tuesday was that that that's correct so we received a request for a certificate of compliance for brookside condominiums off of pine street and they did submit an as built um i set up a site visit on next Tuesday to go over the site with the as built and and go over the items that the Commission had um, put together from our last site visit where there was some issues okay um, you also had a um, comment on here on 1900 Main Street um, have we got is there anything do we know who the owner of the property is um i managed to lose my report but i did um so i i am the assumption my assumption is that it's still the current owners uh it seemed like there was something going on there for a while but i never heard of any turnover so i don't know if it was ever turned over I did put out an email to various departments, the building inspection um, administration and health department. And um, yeah, they health and building said, you know, they know as much as we do that it was on hold. Administration is going to check with um, the police department to see what's going on with them and get back to me. Okay. Um, all right. So we expect a response from administration. I am hoping for one. Yes. Um, Afa did say that she would, she would follow through with that. Okay. Um, let's see what we get from there. Um, but I think it's time we do something and I think, uh, see what response we get from administration and then we can decide whether we need to go to town council for our next uh, okay uh, yeah because action on this i have a question okay. for landis about that so last two weeks ago you used that that visualization tool um i just wonder if if, if that visualization tool should take a look to see what else going on it just seems like the lot is packed with vehicles um right so i i did did go on there and and review what's been occurring in the past year or so and there, there's a lot of activity that's occurring on the site uh, my thought sort of in the same I, box but depending on what answer we get from administration and we'd have to go through administration to do this but the police department has a drone and i think maybe uh we could ask if they could do a flyover and see what's going on in that lot yeah, we can do that. I mean, near maps, the last aerial is was March 2021. Um, and they, they, they do aerials every six months. 
Okay. I'm just, they recently, just yeah, they, they recently, it looked like they re-graveled the whole site, and they have a lot of vans stored there now. So. Yeah, so it's, when I'm going by, it seems like there's a lot of vehicles in that lot. So I think we we need to, I think, do start to do something of, uh, instead of just keep putting it off. So, okay. Yep, I agree. Okay. Um, let's see. You have Palmer Lane on here also that we have there apparently some progress being made on a restoration plan? Um, yes. So a restoration plan was put together by Glosser Engineering and submitted to Michael Brait. And Michael Brait then submitted it to me and to Naponset Land Holdings. Um, and I believe that Tom Palmer and um, Naponset Land Holdings person is going to go out and do a site visit with that with the restoration plan and see if it's good good with them. Um, it seems like it's a pretty good restoration plan with a fair amount of plantings. Okay. Um, we still got a couple minutes here. Um, you want me to update you on Lost Brook? Yeah. No, why not? Okay. Lost so again, Lost Brook Trail uh, was a clearing of the buffer zone without a um, valid order of conditions or, or request for determination. And the um, property owners have been very helpful and cooperative. I went out there last night and um, they had already started putting in uh, no alteration posts for plaques and have ordered some of the shrubs um, again, Gloucester Engineering put together a plan, um, and I talked with the owners and wanted it, wanted some more plantings, some additional plantings than that plan, and additional plaques. So basically, um, I've asked them to put plaques along the whole 25 foot no alteration area that's on their property, and to just scatter the the shrubs about the 25 foot no alteration area. Um, even, even if it's within areas where trees weren't physically cut, but it, it was it was cleared pretty good, and they were very fine with that. Um, they 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 were very very cooperative. Okay. Um, by the time you get the uh, notice to read, uh, we could do the seventy eight Cascade Terrace. I have it right here. We're at 7.15, ready to go. Okay. Town of Walpole requests for determination of applicability, Conservation Commission, public hearing in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and the Walpole Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Notice is hereby given of the intent of John Glosser of Glosser Engineering to replace a free cesspool system with a septic system including a leach field at 78 Cascade Terrace in Walpole. Work will occur within lawn. Plans are on file with the Conservation Commission office. The public hearing on the above matter will be held during a virtually accessible video, Zoom, meeting on May 26, 2021, beginning at 7.15. All interested parties are requested to be present. Contact Conservation for access information John Wiley, Chairman, Walpole Conservation Commission. Okay, representing the applicant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is uh, John Glossa, Glossa Engineering, 46 East Street in East Walpole. So do you want me to try to put this plan up? Uh, you, you had, uh, are you ready, Bailey, to help? I can also do it if John can't. I. Um, Anybody can do it. <laughs> no, we want John to do it. Oh, okay. We want John to do it. Post disabled participant screen sharing, it's telling me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my part. I have to do that. <laughs> Oops. I just do that. Okay, here we go. Um, all right. We're on multiple. Go for it. I 
I should have put it on the top here somewhere. We may be saying goodbye to this process soon, I'm hoping. I'm just going to say, John, we could be happy when we have the person. I heard the governor extend it to September 1st. Is that true? Ah, uh, that's what I heard, too. Oh, no. Is that, oh. is that mandatory or optional? Well, I, I, I think we'll have to wait to find out what administration says and KP law says but I yeah I, I don't think you have to okay John I could do it faster than this uh, yeah. <laughs> Bailey <laughs> you, just can't just find it. <laughs> you have to put it where you can find it can you see it no, no. no. fair no. screen there's a little button at the bottom you have to it's hit green. the green share screen. No, I did. Can you see it? No. I see you. You do. Sorry. I mean, I have it here. It's just... I don't have my little open button. See, I see it, but you guys don't see it? No. No. Bailey, uh, can you play the Jeopardy music, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys can well, let Bailey put it up. I'm or, I mean, let uh, Allery can put it up. Come on, Bailey, help us out, will you? <laughs> John, go back to your Zoom screen where you see all of us in little boxes. Yep. I got it. Share There's screen. The, yep. And when you uh, hit share screen, a, a window should pop up with a whole bunch of different options. Yeah. How many screens do you have do you just have one laptop desktop view or do you have yeah, multiple just, no then just hit, one then hit your desktop view and then whatever is on your desktop we will see so if well, you that is, up, it's on a it's on a but it's not on the desktop it's on a flash drive okay if it's if it's up though and you can see it from your desk from your laptop screen then you should be okay just choose the view that shows your whole screen, which should be desktop versus a specific item you might have up. Okay. So now I gotta find it. So I can see it now, though, Bailey. That's what I'm saying. So, so you I, need to do it from your share screen view, though. That little window that pops up, once you hit share screen, you need to then click on... You Don't go to find it afterwards. Click on share screen and then click on, like, your desktop view or whatever it, it says. It, so that's in this little box? Select a window or application that you want to share? Yeah, to share your whole desktop. But it does, it, so the only choices I have are screen, whiteboard, or iPhone, iPad that I see, right? Oh, files? Try screen. Screen's all you guys. Oh, there we go. See, now we see your laptop and, your, and what you're looking at. Okay. So now go find your document. Okay. Yep. And remember, we can see everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta get you guys out of the way, though. <laughs> well, I gotta get you. But I can't move you guys out of, out of my way now get to the thing to pull down the so where you're viewing there should be a little box there's like a little view button or maybe a couple little dots or there's a, a one bar two bar three bars hit like your one little bar and that'll that'll completely minimize us and you might not get us back but that will get us out of your way so you can get to your and what does it look like Bailey 
It's in the top right corner. It's either a oh, oh, of your Zoom. Yeah, okay. Of, of your, where you it, see I us. It, I get it, I get it. Okay. Okay. Is that there it? You That's Can you it. see it? Yes, sir. So you want me to tell you guys the real bad news? This isn't the right plan. No, it's the correct have plan. Done it? Have you already done it, Sean? Not me. Not me. I don't, in, I don't <laughs> install them. So unfortunately, this had to go to the um, um, to the um, Board of Health and the Conservation Commission. So I said to Kenny Jones, the contractor, maybe I didn't explain myself correctly. I said, Kenny, this needs to get approval by the boards before you can start. So then a few weeks, and I went to the Board of Health and they approved it. They need to approve it because you need a local upgrade approval if you're less than 50 feet back from wetlands under the um, under the Title V. So um, the next thing I know, you know, few weeks go by and Kenny gives me a call. Okay, we're all set for the as-built at 78 Cascade Terrace. So I went out, I took pictures, and uh, I went over and saw Landis. He put the compost sock up. He never even really, this would all remained grass when he put it in. So he didn't, um, the compost sock really didn't even come into play. So let me just explain. So Cascade Terrace, if you're taking Common Street out, of the center of town before you get to the high school it's that last street and if anyone's been down it it um has this crazy chicane in it and it gets down to the bottom and then you're at the um at the neponset river and so there's a house here on the left there's another house here that we did maybe eight years ago or so um, it's basically kind of an esker, it's a big, or a terrace, it's a big hill of sands. I've done a bunch of systems on this street. Um, this guy had three cesspools, one here, one here, and one here. This was the limit of one. I have to stay 20 feet back from his foundation here, and it would really be difficult to put this system on the side here with the setbacks and kind of the way the slope was. I would have actually been closer to the to the uh, river than than what this shows. So um, I think this was, you know, this is the space I chose. He doesn't really have any room over here and he'd have to sort of pump this up if he wanted to kind of get over here. So this was really the only place um, to put it. This probably doesn't show how dramatic this drop is, but this is um, fairly um, uh, diff a good difference in elevation between the river and right here. So we do put an impervious barrier here so sewage couldn't leak out and go down this slope. And, um, and that's basically it. So we're, you know, the construction's probably 32 feet back from the vegetation here. There really isn't much wetland vegetation because it's just simply a very steep slope right down to the water's edge. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. Like I said, we showed compost sock, which was installed, and this has been installed. We've done the as-built and not sure, but we may have even uploaded the as-built with the uh, Board of Health already. It went in exactly as it's shown on this plan. So sorry about that. I talked to Kenny and he, he was apologetic. He didn't do this on purpose, believe me. He just didn't understand what what I meant when I said this needs to go to the boards. He thought it just needed Board of Health approval. So that's where we're at. Okay, Landis. Yeah, I think you all should deny it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pick it up. <laughs> Dig it, it up. Take <laughs> it, it out and connect to the Dig store. it up. <laughs> um, so I went out there and surprised the owners of the property who are putting their irrigation system back in. And um, everything looks okay. The, you know, they, they're reseeding the whole lawn now right up to the, the uh, compost tube. 
Um, so I just let them know to make sure to keep that compost tube in until everything is completely uh, stabilized. And um, that was pretty much it. There's a pretty good drop there from the top down to the, the ponset. And Landis, did you see any um, any erosion or anything, anything in those compost tubes? Or are they already gone? No, that no, no, they were definitely there. I that's they that they were fresh. Um, so I I um, just made sure they understood that they have to stay there until the grass is growing. But no, no erosion in them or anything. No. Great. Okay. Um, Bailey, any questions or comments? No comment. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Dean? Oh, sorry, I skipped order. Sorry, Bailey. Okay. Uh, Doug? Yeah, I, I, I would say a, a Title a Title V uh, septic system beats the cesspools that were there. So, I'm good. Okay. Medio? No, no comment. Let's see. Um, well, almost no comment. I mean, I agree. We don't want cesspools. Um, but, um, Gosh, Kenny Jones was working next to the Neponset River and wasn't sure he had to come before us. It's kind of interesting, but all right. No comment. No, no maybe you misunderstood, Betsy. I'm, I'm not so sure he, he, I told him I was going to take it in front of the board, so I'm not so sure he misunderstood that. He thought that he was all set to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not blaming that on him. I'm just sort of telling you what happened. I think it was just a little miscommunication between Kenny and myself as far yeah. as what needed to be done and when it was going to be done. So, okay. so I'm sorry about that. Believe me, he didn't do it on purpose. These people, um, their cesspools weren't really uh, causing any problems. They were just, you know, they're at an age where they're thinking of selling and they just were proactive and wanted to get themselves um, set up to you know sell their house and be able to pass a title five inspection so um i don't think kenny really did it because you know there was any big hurry or anything like that i think he was just, just maybe like i said i think he was just a little bit misinformed by me or maybe i just didn't explain to him um enough like, that there were two boards and, and that he needed to ask me and not not just the board of health before he Okay. Anything else, Betsy? Nope. Thank you. Al? No problem. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments? Please identify yourself for the record. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, Landis, you're recommending a negative two. Is that correct? Um, yes, negative two is work within the resource area, being the riverfront area, but no impact. Okay. Someone make that a motion? So moved. Second. Move the all in favor. Bailey? Aye. Dean? Aye. Doug? Aye. Video? Aye. Betsy? Aye. No? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. Um, are you on the next one by any chance? Uh, no. Is there anything we could, because he's on this again, right? Yeah, I'm on, I have the last one. Which? The last one hasn't been built yet. <laughs> one for two. Um, all right, we're not, all right, we'll, we'll, don't forget how we got on, on to, uh, to this one so when we get back you can just push the right buttons yeah yeah thanks okay <laughs> so next there's determination of applicability for uh 643 703 main street village realty trust have you got the uh notice landis yes they do tana walpole request for determination of applicability conservation commission public hearing in accordance with mass general law chapter 131 section 40 wetlands protection act and walpole wetlands protection bylaw notices hereby given of at the intent of jim galapagos sorry with village trust realty to replace the facade of an existing building and repair an existing sidewalk a 
at 643 703 Main Street. Plans are on file at the Conservation Commission public hearing on the above matter will be held during a virtually accessible video meeting May 26, 2021 at 725. All interested parties should be present. John Wiley, Chairman, Walpole Conservation Commission. Okay, representing the applicant. Jim Glaropoulos, one of the owners. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Go ahead and proceed. Um, we're just replacing the sidewalks. Some of them have gotten a lot of cracks and stuff over the years, so we're gonna replace them. Um, redress the existing columns that are there. We're going to add a facade to the right-hand side. If you're familiar from uh, Finnegan's Wake down to the pharmacy, there is no overhang over the sidewalk there, so we're going to add one and then plan to uh, redo the facade. The metal roof that's there is going to get replaced with a stucco finish. Okay. Um, Landis? Um, I don't have any other any specific comments in regards to this filing. Um, it's a riverfront area, but the activity is really in a uh, developed area, the riverfront area. Um, so I I just I, and I've noticed before that just the um at, at some point the dumpsters to the rear of the building need to be um contained better okay do you did you go over this with mr Garopoulos? i i did yes okay. he's aware okay good enough you have we any clean questions? the area we clean the area once a year i have my landscaper go in the woods and take anything that's gone over i send out notices on a yearly basis to the tenants telling them you know make sure that the dumpster covers are closed and contain them i uh do our best sometimes the, those covers the, the dumpsters get so full the dumpster covers may open up but you know they've been pretty good about cleaning up after themselves but sometimes they need to be reminded okay um you may want to do it more than once a year to uh, just make sure that the area stays clean yes okay um okay uh, bailey any questions or comments no comments. Dean? No. Doug? How about adding some signage right at the dumpster to remind the tenants to keep it sealed? I could do that. Okay. Medio? No comment. Betsy? No comment. Al? Well, the only comment has to do with uh, during the demolition stage. Uh, and the reconstruction stage that they uh, make sure that uh, everything's contained and none of it's blown away and into the river. Uh, we, we plan on putting some silt socks around any storm drains and uh, probably put it in the, uh, what do they call it, filter fabric inside the drains. But they're far enough away that it shouldn't be just, you know, get that far. You know, it's probably 100 feet from where the sidewalks are. but. I will make sure that that gets maintained and, and not go into the storm drains. My, my comment is that uh, since you have become the owner there, uh, I've noticed uh, an improvement of the maintenance of the area. So uh, even, you. Out, even out of Main Street, uh, the grass is growing and nobody's driving across it. No. Uh, it looks better, uh, which is better for the river. So. Um, Thank you. I assume that it will continue. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, I think that's the main thing is uh, you continue to uh, police the area to uh, make sure that uh, stuff gets contained in the dumpsters and uh, if not, that it's picked up so we keep that area clean. Um, yes. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments? Please identify yourself for the record. Okay, hearing none, um, what do we have, what's your recommendation here, Landis, for uh, termination? Um, again, it should be a negative two, work in the 
resource area being the riverfront area, but no impact. Okay. So we'll make that a motion. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Bailey? Aye. Dean? Aye. Doug? Aye. Video? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Mel? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next 7.35. We're good. Okay, we can continue with 17 Pheasant Hill Road. All right, John, run schedule here. Let's go. Let's keep it up. <laughs> okay, request for determination of applicability. Conservation Commission, public hearing. You can start, John, while I'm reading this. Right, In accordance yeah. with Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act and the Walpole Wetlands Protection Bylaw, Notice is hereby given of the intent of John Glosser of Glosser Engineering to replace a septic system at 17 Pheasant Hill Road in Walpole, Mass. Work will occur within the lawn. Plans are on file with the Conservation Commission office. The public hearing on the above matter will be held during a virtually accessible video Zoom meeting on May 26, 2021, beginning at 7.35. All persons interested shall attend. Contact conservation john wiley chairman walpole conservation commission good job okay, okay. Hooray. thanks bailey so pheasant hill road if you drive up north street from 1a you gotta drive up pretty far and northwood um, goes off to your left and pheasant hill goes off to your right um, there's probably a dozen houses on Pheasant Hill Road, and I think there's another little road off of it, Courtney, or I think something like that. So that's the location. Um, this is actually um, Dick Powers, if any of you know him. Um, so his system has failed. This was a system that was built in the 80s, this subdivision. Uh, where my little thing is, well, I'll just back it up. Um, the subdivision was built in the um, sorry in the 1980s. So he has a house here. This house, uh, this area, you can see there's wetlands in the back here. So um, there's a lot of wetlands here. There's wetlands along both sides of his driveway as you come in, and then you can see these wetlands pretty much go all the way around here. And you know, back then it was a little bit. Um, you know, there was no, no disturb and that sort of stuff. So this house gets built. Here's the wetlands. Um, here's your 25 foot no disturb, which really, um, doesn't even come onto his property. Um, and then here's the 50 foot. That's where we have to, um, stay back with our, um, septic system. So his existing septic system is right here. Um, it's the septic tank comes out and there's a D box and you can tell this has failed and um, he needs to replace this. He's has the pump every few weeks and I think it's just he and his wife. So the idea here is we're going to come out of the tank um, with a new, we're going to abandon all of this. This is simply leaching trenches and then come out of the tank with a new pipe with distribution box. This is a Presby system, so we're trying to avoid um, cost and maybe a hump in the yard. So a Presby system provides more treatment than a conventional system that has a little bit different type of pipe bedded in sand. And um, so instead of being four feet above the groundwater table, we can be two. We actually were able to set this up, not a little bit less than three feet above the water table so and it's a bed and it fits right here a little bit of grading around the side um this, to make the side slope here but again this is an impervious barrier this line here so that the sewage can't go out and break out on this slope even though in my experience gravity pulls the sewage down not sideways um, we show a compost sock from his deck and then all the way here this is an existing stone wall here so we're just going to go along that stone wall and then from where that stone wall turns 
we're going to run the compost sock over to his driveway. Um, they don't have to bring in a septic tank, so this construction is um, fairly um, simple <clears throat> because, to, you know, usually they want the truck to be able to back right up to this, but they don't have to now. They can excavate this out. They'll haul away um, any excess material that's not going to be left on site. And then they're going to, you know, fill this in with sand. So they'll bring the trucks to here, dump the sand here, and then pull it into the into the hole, put the piping in, and then cover it with uh, loam, seed it, and essentially they're done. So it's not a huge um, job. Um, it should be done in a couple of days. And, um, you know, um, I'm pretty sure Kenny's doing this one also. So he'll loam it, and then he hydro seeds it. Um, I think Dick takes pretty good care of his of his yard, so I'm going to assume he's going to keep that well watered and it shouldn't be any problem in a short period of time. And this one has not been built yet. Okay. Hey. Liz? Um, so... I would just like the erosion control to be um, extended up the driveway a little bit. I'm assuming the driveway is going to be the access in and out of the trucks. They'll they'll be carrying. You said they're going to um, take the material off site. Right. So so they'll be driving in and out, <laughs> and up right. the driveway. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you could just hook it up the driveway a bit to catch that corner, so. So to here or yeah, that's what I was thinking. To the first those... bend in the driveway. Okay. Okay. Um. And so you're are, are they just gonna dig and put it in a truck and then cart it off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna dig out whatever they they need to dig out and um. And then, like I said, that they, they won't they don't leave anything there that isn't going to be used they do have some side sloping here that so they will use some of that yeah. to create the side there will slope. be nothing stockpiled no they don't want to do that because okay. then they have to pick it up twice so they and, just want to take the excavator and you know kenny's and i'm pretty sure this is kenny he is really good at estimating just by eye how much to leave and how much has to go so they'll take out everything like i said they don't want to you know pick it up twice so they're going to take it out with the trucks he'll he'll form this side slope they'll take this out anything else out with the trucks and then they will bring in sand so there's a lot of sand right. that comes in so do you anticipate them having to dewater at all i don't think so okay no Hello. Uh, and, please leave a message after the tone oh that's not me and okay. um if they do have to dewater this is not gravel here so the it's very poor, you know, it's relatively poor soil, so not anticipating an issue with that at all. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Bailey, any questions or comments? No questions. Thank you. Dean? So, yeah, you're going to live load the soil. My questions were all brought up around soil. I do have one question. Why not dig up the old one and replace it? Is it just because this isn't a buffer? Well, they don't want to deal with the sewage. So to do that, what they need to do is, because that is completely full of sewage now, Dean, right? So he's he has to take, it's not perking at all. So for them to do that, they actually put almost like well points into it, and then they have to get the pump truck to suck it all out. And then anything that's come into that, contact with sewage that they see by regulation is supposed to go to a landfill oh so the tipping cost you know to dump at the landfill is pretty expensive so yeah, in a case like this or in probably 80 percent of them that we do we try to avoid getting into the old system as much as possible it's expensive and it's a little dangerous nobody wants to get that sewage you know on them so um 
for me, good policy just to kind of find a, a good spot nearby. I know what you're saying. It's a little farther away from the wetlands. But I think the construction is fairly simple here. I don't really anticipate any problem to the wetlands. Um, and we do meet our 50-foot setback um, to the wetlands um, that we're required to do by Title V. Anything else? No, thank you. Okay, Doug? Uh, no questions. Emilio? No questions. Betsy? Um, no comment. Al? Only comment is that I know the site, and I was always amazed that they could have a system in there. Uh, but uh, uh, I think this will be an improvement. Okay. Anybody in the audience? Have any questions or comments? Please identify yourself for the record. Hearing none. I saw someone make a motion to close the hearing. I'll move that. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, Bailey? Bailey, are you? Was that a response? Okay. Uh, Dean? Aye. Doug? Aye. Media? Sorry, did I break the Aye. Okay. Betsy? Aye. Um, and I, aye. And I just heard Bailey say aye, too. I'm going to pick that up. Al? Aye. Jack, aye. Okay. You don't um, hear me? Thank you, John. Yes, we got your, we got your eye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Hey, John. We miss you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Amelia. We'll see you. All right. Um, what we got left? Good night. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Do we have anyone here from Boyden Estates, Jack? Um, Any of the homeowners from Boyden Estates? I'm here. Oh, did you want to uh, comment? We were on the agenda. We did just uh, bring that up earlier, but uh, did you identify yourself? And uh, if you want to comment, go ahead. Sure. My name is Robert Tubbs. I'm the new owner at 11 Boyden Lane which was formerly lot six. Uh, okay, that's a different subject. Oh, oh, I thought you said Summer Street. Okay, we're talking about Boyden Lane now. I'm 11 Boyden Lane. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Right, was... right Jack, so it, it, I, I sent um, both the owners at, at uh, lot five Boyden Lane and lot six Boyden Lane um, letters, just uh, letting them know and agendas that that the issue of drainage at Boyden Lane was still on our agenda, and we expected um, Rob Truex to present a plan for what to do with the overflow that occurred at the wetlands in front of six, Lot 6 Boyden Lane, um, which the Conservation Commission had requested that he present tonight. Um, I, after I dropped off the letters to the homeowners, I received emails from both Rob Truex and Lou Petrosi Wall Street Development that they weren't they weren't going to attend tonight's meeting. They don't have the plan to present. But I thought that it would be good to hear from the the homeowner um, who who does own the property now um, and ex has experienced the flooding issue and hear from from him um, what he would like to see happen. Okay, and you are on lot, which lot? Uh, six. Tubbs? Lot six. Six, okay, go ahead. So my name is Robert Tubbs. Um, I took ownership of the property in mid-January, which was after these flooding incidents had happened. Um, my understanding from Lou Petrosi of Wall Street Development was that plans were underway to mitigate any further events. I didn't realize it was at this level of the Conservation Commission. Um, last night was the first that I had actually heard or seen any of this paperwork. So it was a bit of a surprise to me. I thought Lou was handling this um, 
to be fair, I'm having a pool put in the backyard, so a lot of the landscape, final landscaping and development has been deferred pending that. Um, and I think I'm not trying to speak for Lou or, or anything. I'm just, from my standpoint, my understanding was things were going to be addressed as the construction of my backyard finished up. Um, so I'm interested to hear what Lou's plans are going to be and Rob Truex's plans are going to be. Um, again, last night was sort of the first I heard sort of the extent of this, so. Okay. Uh, Landis, uh, you said you heard from Rob Truax, who said he would have a plan for us this evening, I believe. What, what did he say? Right, right. So the last time they were on um, a, at a Conservation Commission meeting, the commission directed Rob Truax and Wall Street Development to have a plan submitted to me the week before the meeting for to be put and then presented at this meeting on May 26th. Um, I got an email from Rob Truck saying he needs more time to do survey work. And then I got an email from Lou Petrosi, Wall Street Development, saying that they weren't ready and they weren't planning on attending tonight's meeting. Okay. Uh, did Truex give you any indication of when he would have a plan ready? No. Okay. Um, let me look at our next... Um, all right, looking at our uh, June 9th is our next meeting. We've got uh, stormwater erosion control, and we also need to do the uh, um, what are conditions for 55 Summer Street? All right. Um, I'm inclined to tell Mr. Truax <clears throat> and Mr. Petrosi that if we don't have this plan by our next meeting, that they will both be subject to fines. Does that um, sound reasonable? Yeah. Yes, it sounds reasonable. So I want that put into the minutes so that it's absolutely clear and into a letter so it's absolutely clear. And then, um, gosh, I hope we stick to our guns. Um, I, I get kind of worried about what I called the last meeting, our, our dichotomy and the way that we deal with different um, enforcement orders we have, we have two great examples right here tonight of people just going out of their way to cooperate with landis and get something straightened out and she went out there she didn't have to say anything to them they're already got the, the plaques up they're already doing the planning and I, I i think it's been about three or four months maybe longer uh, i haven't looked at the minutes to go back on the history of this so i would like it all in writing and i'd really like to see us uh, to, uh, as far as Mr. Tubbs, you're concerned, this does not involve you, in case you're concerned. It's you. uh, with the uh, developer and the engineer who have been promising us um, plans or uh, something that will uh, avoid the situation. Uh, you said you moved in in January, was that Correct. it? Okay, so I have to believe the flooding that occurred on your property was in December, is that right, Landis? Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay. And I just I just wanted to make sure that the homeowners understood what was going on and um, was in the loop as far as the plan because they're the homeowners, they own the property. So if GLM and Wall Street Development propose something to the Conservation Commission, the, the homeowner also has to be on board of approval that that plan is, is, is okay with what um, you know, their property. So. And I, I, trust me, I appreciate being moved into this. Um, right. And I, I will cooperate in any way I can, and I'll light a fire under Lou's butt, but um, as much as I can. But I, again, I appreciate being moved into this. It was okay. a bit of a surprise to me last night. You know, we want to keep you involved and, and not get you in the middle of things, but this has been going on yeah. for a while. As we said, this uh, occurred in. Uh, December and we're now 
approaching June, so they've had enough time to come up with a plan. So, um, Bailey, did you get that in the uh, the minutes that uh, we will send a letter to both Mr. Petrosi and Mr. Truax that we expect a, uh, a you didn't plan? Mean, you didn't mean Bailey, did you? No. So. Oh, did I say Bailey? I mean Allery. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, that uh, you'll get the in the minutes, and we will send probably send them an email so they get it tomorrow. Landis, are you going to be in? Y yes, I'll, I'll send an email. email so for our June ninth meeting, they should have it by June seventh. Yes. We're in our office by. If by noontime, June seventh. That, that will that work? Noontime. Sure. Okay. Uh, or they will be subject to a fine, uh, and each of them will be subject to a fine for uh, failing to uh, produce information requested and promised information requested by the commission and promised by the applicant and the engineer. And also postponed a couple times, I think. I mean, we, we actually had a due date of yeah. a while back. Well, I think we need to explain that. So um, uh, uh, you got that wording, Valerie? I do, yeah. Okay. Um, so at this point, uh, uh, Mr. Tubbs, do you have any questions about what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm up to speed now. Um, Landis, I will send you an email so you have my contact information. Great, thank you. And if you can just keep me in the loop, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. All right, I appreciate All right. it. Thank you for popping in. All right, okay. have a good night, everyone. Thank uh, you. Uh, actually, thank Mr. You. Tubbs, I, I just want to yeah. point something out. Yeah. Landis, now, I think I saw a version of this pool location. It's going to be to the right of your patio. Oh, geez to the west of your patio in that back corner there, right, Mr. Tubbs? Correct. Now, Landis, that's in jurisdictional area, correct? Do you remember that plan that Lou was showing last time? That was a different lot, I don't think. This is lot six, and the wetlands is in the front of the house. Okay. So I believe the pool outside the jurisdiction, or it was a modification. I can't remember, but I know we already talked, discussed about the pool. Okay, so this area right here, right? This is where his pool is going. That's that's lot two. We're oh, talking about lot six. I am really sorry. Sorry about that. That's okay. No okay. problem. Okay. The, okay. This Never one mind. is Describe across the house. street, and it has a little wetlands in front of the house, and the pool is at the far back corner. So, they, okay. They're, Thank you. Thank he's you for okay with the pool. Thank you. No other questions. Okay. Anybody right. else have any questions or comments? Um, I'm just honored to be in the same view as Allery, quite frankly. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, Dex, before you go, I we, we may have lot five homeowners here as well. If they want to say anything, um, we would welcome their comments. Okay, uh, would you like to please identify yourself for the record? Uh, yes, uh, Timothy Moses, Lot 5, Boyden Estates. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just hopping on late here, but, um, you know, as far as the the runoff issue, I mean, it's, it's only happened twice. Uh, both were roughly around Christmas time uh, that I'm aware of, and haven't had any issues since okay well i don't think we've had that rain we had in december was a significant storm but nothing uh that unusual and it should uh according to all the plans that we get that that should not have caused erosion and um and flooding onto onto your property um so it, it was not um it was not a, an overly significant rainfall amount. Um, we 
we've had different comments from the uh, developer and the engineer as far as, you know, it was uh, heavy rain and the ground might have been frozen and there was snow in the ground. It still doesn't add up to uh, a huge rainfall event. Um, in addition, on your lot, we have been waiting for a uh, certificate of compliance uh, to that everything has been done according to the plan. Um, are you aware that um, that that has been requested from the developer? Yes, uh, he made us aware of that uh, just this past week. Okay. Um, there's also. That would be an as-built plan and a request for a certificate of compliance. Yes, thanks for correcting that, Landis. Um, also, there's some there were some issues on your lot prior to your uh, during development of the lot. Um, and as always, this is one of the reasons why we wanted the as-built and the request for a certificate of compliance to see that all of the work that was supposed to have been done on your lot has been done because you have been a uh, resident there for, is it over a year? Yes, correct. Yes. So um, I don't know what, um, what leverage you have to um, have the developer, Mr. Petrosi, uh, complete the work that is necessary uh, to, uh, to, to get your, your lot uh, certified with a certificate of compliance in the as built. So um, if you're talking to him, you may want to uh, ask that he complete that work. Um, Among other things, Landis was reminding me today, you, you can't refinance a new mortgage if you don't have that. You can't sell it, not that you're eager to sell it after only a year, but I mean, it, it, it kind of holds up all sorts of business, business dealings. Um, around owning real estate if you don't have those. Do you have any questions uh, for us? Uh, I don't. No, okay. thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, and you do have our um, contact with Landis in our office if you do have anything that comes up? I do. Okay, yes. good. Okay, thank you uh, for coming on and uh, uh, joining us and see what uh, going we would we're we'd like to get those lots that are finished and occupied that uh, all the work be done so we can get the uh, certificates of compliance and as built in sure. thank you okay um, anybody have any questions or comments okay thank you thank you Liz, anything else? I, I think that's it on, on that issue. Okay, good enough. Um, what else do we have on there? We've got uh, some minutes from uh, May 12th. Someone want to move the minutes on May 12th? I'll move them. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Bailey? Aye. Dean? Aye. Doug? Aye. Video? Aye. Betsy? Aye. No? Aye. Jack? Aye. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Oh, there it is. Anything else that's on our agenda here? I think that's it, Jack. I think we've covered it all. We went over an hour. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, good enough. So we'll be uh, on our next meeting is uh, June 9th. June 9th. Yes. Oh. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, so someone make a motion to close and the then meeting. Just check. If, if oh. anything changes, I'll let you know. You know, things are starting to open up in the Commonwealth. Um, things are opening up on the 29th and then further opening up on June 15th. I know some towns will be going to in-person meetings. I'm not sure what what we're doing here in, in Walpole, but I'll, I'll keep everybody in the loop. 
it sounded, it sounded like June 9th will definitely be on Zoom. Yes, June 9th will definitely be on Zoom. Okay. Okay, good enough. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Hey, are you ready? I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be close to hearing. I was going to say, did yeah, we... Did we uh, vote? Do we vote to close? Everybody say aye. 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 Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay good night, have a great right. weekend.